Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build this chicken coop and run. This is like the Taj Mahal of all chicken coops and it was so much fun to build. I am just a beginner DIY guy and I've never built anything like this in my life and it was super easy. And so I wanna share this video with you guys if maybe you are not great at construction and DIY projects, but you wanna give this a try. I'm gonna give you step-by-step step exactly how I built it. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is build the main frame of the chicken coop. And so to do that, we're gonna use two four by fours that we cut at a 15 degree angle at the top. And then we are going to also use two two by fours for one wall of the main structure. Then I'm going to fasten those together. One of those is gonna be doubled up two two by fours. That way it will be really nice and supportive of the floor structure. And then the one on the ground will be just to stabilize things. And I will make the note that every board that is touching the ground, including the four by four post, are all pressure treated. So basically if they're touching the ground, they are pressure treated wood. The rest is not pressure treated. So basically you just repeat that step twice and then you will fasten these two side walls together with two more two by fours. And then for the front of the structure, you're going to use just one two by four at the floor level of the structure and no two by fours down on the ground at the front because this will be an area that the chickens can access from underneath inside the run. Next, I'm going to do just two by fours for the floor joist. And I'm not going to share all of the details in this video because I want this to not be two hours long, but I will put as many of the details down in the description as I can, like the material list and as many of the cuts as I possibly can. Hopefully you'll be able to look at that material list, the cut list that I give you and this video and build this for yourself. And now we are done with the main structure of the chicken coop. And next I have to get Emily's help because we're gonna rotate this and make our coop go the other direction. You did all of this in an hour yesterday. Baby, it takes me an hour to get my hair done. Oh my gosh. You're just gonna walk that way. Oh my gosh. You can a muscle woman. All right, and now it is time to cut the floor for the chicken coop. I'm using half inch plywood and I really need to invest in a circular saw. I've needed it for so many years, but I've always just made do with whatever other tools that I have. So I'm cutting my half inch plywood with a jigsaw, which is totally fine. It's just harder to get those perfectly straight cuts. So after getting that cut down, I had Emily help me carry it over to the chicken coop and we did have to notch the plywood around the four by four post. So I basically just measured out the three and a half inches and cut that little notch. And then I got it all screwed down with three inch deck screws. So that's pretty much the types of screws that we're using for almost the whole build. I've got three inch screws for all of the structure and the plywood. And then we've got inch and three quarter screws that will be used later for the siding. One sheet of plywood wouldn't cover the entire floor of the coop. So I did have to piece together a couple other pieces at the back of the coop, but basically repeating the same steps for the main sheet of plywood. Next up, we'll be framing the walls of the chicken coop. And to make this easy for you guys, for those who are interested in actually building this for yourself, I'm going to just name these walls as wall one, as the front wall, the left side will be wall two, the rear wall three, and then the right side will be wall four. I'm going to put a detailed list with the cut list down in the description below. That way, if you are interested in building this for yourself, then you can go down to that and look at those exact measurements and then just pause the video on each of these walls and hopefully that will help you build this coop yourself. And then those of you who are not actually interested in building a coop like this, but you're just watching this for the enjoyment or to see what I built for our chickens in our backyard, then I will let you guys just enjoy this next few minutes of time lapse.
here's what your coop should look like after all of the walls are finished being framed. This is wall one in the front, wall two on the left side where those two double doors will open up for access inside the coop. And then wall three will have two windows in it and it has the nesting box built onto the back. And then the last wall is wall four. The next step will be to cover up all of these new walls with T111 siding. And so again, I don't have a circular saw, so I'm gonna cut all of these to size with my Ryobi jigsaw, but you could use a table saw or a circular saw as well. Now I wanted to share this little tip in case you are trying to put up this siding by yourself and you don't have someone to help. Just screw a two by four horizontally at the frame or the base of the chicken coop down to where you want the T111 siding to be flush at the bottom of the coop structure. And then that will help you where you don't have to hold it up and you can screw it all into place. I still use this method even when I did have Emily's dad there to help me hold up the siding. I did use my table saw for a couple pieces like the top or the roof of the nesting boxes and then for some of the smaller rips down at the bottom of the nesting boxes. I went ahead and covered up the entire rear part of the coop even though I know that there are going to be two windows that are going to be there. You could go ahead and measure and cut those play window holes out first and then hang up the sheathing but I think that it'll be a little easier to cut it out from the inside after the fact. And now some of you guys who follow us on socials know that we got a storm in Middle Tennessee. It was actually some tornadoes. Luckily, it didn't do any damage to our house or anything, but it did blow over the chicken coop and completely destroy the temporary coop that we were using for our chickens. Luckily, they weren't in that chicken coop when it got destroyed, so none of our chickens were hurt. The next thing that we had to do was install our shed windows on the coop. And so we have two shed windows that are going to go on the rear side of the coop and then one shed window that is going to go on the left side, which is where the double doors will be underneath. And so to cut these out, I basically just drilled holes in the corners from the inside and then drew a straight line on the outside from the hole to hole and then cut out the window shape with my jigsaw. This actually worked really, really well and I was very pleased with how easy I was able to cut these out and then of course install the new windows. I will put all of the links for the shed windows and the coop door down in the description below and we would really appreciate if you guys are doing this build if you would use our links because that really helps us out and helps us make more content like this. And before we closed ourselves in with all of the windows, the roof, and the doors, I wanted to go ahead and build out the inside of the coop. Before I had ever even thought about getting chickens, I didn't realize that chickens like to sleep roosting or standing up. And so the plants that I'm using have two roosting bars that are going to be over top of a poop board basically where they stand up on these top roosting boards and then they will poop on this board which I'm about to install now and basically I just cleated the wall with blocks and then put those roosting bars at the top and then that poop board which is cut at an angle and is the perfect height for a five gallon bucket to go right underneath that way whenever it's time to clean everything up you can just scoop that poop straight into a bucket and take that over to the compost pile for Emily's garden. The plans for this build were super, super good. I actually got it from another YouTuber named Third Coast Craftsman. So I'm gonna put as many details in the description as I can, like I've mentioned several times, but I will also put a link to his specific build plans, which were really, really good. And they gave you all of the measurements and everything in detail. And so I highly recommend those if you want to purchase that. It was only like $15 for the plans, but he has thought everything out in this build and it is a great build. And I can say that now after having this coop for a couple months now, he really thought everything through. I finished out the inside and closing in the nesting boxes with plywood, and then all of the walls now have siding on them. The holes are cut out for the windows, and so we're really moving along. So now the last step for the front of the coop is going to be cutting out a hole for the automatic solar door. And so I'll put that link down in the description below as well for this. But basically I just traced out that door and then did the same process where I drilled a hole on each of the corners and then I cut out the hole with the Sawzall and then screwed it in. It was super easy to set up this solar powered door and it is actually really cool. It's an automatic door that is going to let the chickens out when the sun comes out and then at night it will close and put the chickens away. So I highly recommend one of these solar powered doors for your chicken coop. 
YouTube, so you don't have to go out there every morning and every afternoon to let them in and let them out. All right, next up, we have to build the roof structure for the main coop house. This is a really simple roof that is built out of all two by fours. They are going horizontal and I do double up the outside of the left and right sides. And then there are a couple short ones that are bracing on the top and the bottom part of the roof. You know what's fun? Being married to a DIYer and him thinking that I'm some muscle woman that can lift a roof on top of this chicken coop. We need to start having babies so that we can have a whole little army of help. Cause I'm not strong enough. He left. Emily is always joking about helping with these kind of things, but she is always there and willing. I mean, I am doing most of these DIY projects because they were her ideas in the first place. It is good to have somebody to help out with this. It's not that the roof is that heavy, but it is just awkward. All right, so the main structure of the chicken coop is built. Obviously, we don't have the windows in, we don't have the doors on, and we don't have the metal roof on. Um, but we're going to go ahead and paint this all first, and then we'll put all of those parts on. And so we are actually gonna go ahead and go with a pink color. Um, this is by Bear Paint, it's called Cupcake Pink. And I tried to use my paint sprayer and it was not working. Um, I always have trouble with paint sprayers for some reason. So I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way with a brush and with a little roller. Um, I may go get a bigger roller. This will probably take way too long, but I'm gonna at least go ahead and get started. So I'll start with the inside of the coop and get this painted and then I'll move on to the outside. Let's do it. So I pretty much just painted the entire chicken coop by hand with a brush and a little mini roller. And I know that I just said that paint sprayers never seem to work for me. And that is true. I had a horrible experience with a paint sprayer with this chicken coop. Basically, I had a paint sprayer that was not working. So I went and rented one from Lowe's. I got it to the house and filled up with paint and it was missing the tip. So anyways, long story short, I know that paint sprayers are great and they probably would have saved me a lot of time when painting this chicken coop, but you can just paint things the good old fashioned way by hand. In a later project I was just doing the other day, I did end up renting a nice paint sprayer from Home Depot and it actually saved me so much time and I'm really starting to like paint sprayers more. I just haven't had good luck with them in the past. After getting everything painted, it was time to install these windows, which are so cool. They're just little play windows that you basically pop in and screw, but they're actually functional and they open and close. And then I reinstalled the solar powered coop door, which is also really, really cool. And I'll put all of those links again down in the description below. I highly recommend all of these products. They are great. So the next step is to paint the trim work for the coop. And so I have a bunch of these one by three furring strips. They are pretty much the cheapest pieces of wood that you can get at a Home Depot or Lowe's. They're like maybe $3 a piece. And so this is the kind of trim I'm using. You could get some nicer like one by fours, one by sixes, however big you want the trim to be. But this is what I'm going with. So I'm pre-painting both sides of it with a white color. And then while that is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the roof, which is just a corrugated metal roof. And I'm cutting it with my angle grinder. Next, it was time to install the roof onto the coop. And I've never really done this before, but basically I just took the metal corrugated roofing, let each piece overlap by a couple of the ridges. And then I shot it all down with screws that I found in that same section of metal roofing. And by that time, all of the trim was already dry. So I started to install that. I put trim on the bottom, the top, the left corner, and the right corner of each side of the chicken coop. And I just nailed all of these trim boards on with my 16 gauge nail gun. Then it was time to start installing the doors onto the chicken coop. And so I didn't do a great job of managing my T111, which is what the doors are all going to be made out of. So I had to just piece together a bunch of scraps to make my doors. So there definitely was enough, but I wish that I would have left a full sheet to deal with for the doors. I ended up making it work. I cut the trim pieces for the doors and framed out the outside of the T111. And then I cut an angled brace piece, which I'm never good about getting these types of measurements. And so I literally just lay the board down where I want it to be. And then I make my tick marks and then I go cut it. And that has always worked for me. So if you're not very skilled at this kind of stuff, don't be overwhelmed. Just literally lay your board exactly where you want it make your tick marks of where your cut should be and then it should work out perfect. 
I snapped that angled piece into the door frame and then shot it on with my 16 gauge nail gun again. And just like that, one of the barn doors was finished, but I still have to make one more. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm gonna make this just really quick and satisfying just like this. Then I went ahead and painted the doors pink and touched up the white trim on the doors. And then it was time to install the rest of the trim on the chicken coop and then those new barn doors. And so installing these barn doors, I was a little bit nervous about because I've not really done anything with hinges and stuff, but it was super, super easy. I have these gate hinges that I got from Home Depot and it actually just went right on. So I did that. I put some handles on there and it looks so good. So then I finished up the rest of the trim work. Then I basically repeated the same steps for the other door for the nesting box door in the back, except for it's a little bit longer and it has three hinges on the underneath of the door. So it folds down when you collect your eggs. After getting that all installed, I ended up painting it pink and putting the handle on there. And now it was time to start on the coop run. And so I started with the left side wall, which was super easy to build. This is just very basic framing. I did have to dig down a little bit in my dirt because the ground was unlevel. So that may be something that you have to do if you can't get a level spot to put your coop. Next, I moved on to the right side wall, which was pretty much the exact same thing as the left side, except for it didn't have a hole for the door. I ended up putting that onto the coop and realized that the run was way too narrow. So then I built this little miniature wall basically that gave me an extra foot on the width of the entire run, which I think that will be really nice for the chickens and give them plenty of space. Then the last step on this was to do the rear wall, which was again, just very basic framing. I will put all of those measurements again in the description down below. I had to dig out that part a little bit too, and this is what those walls look like. After getting that last wall up, it was time to build the roof structure for the coop run, which is pretty much the exact same process as the main coop house, except for much longer. And so I did the same exact thing, doubled up the side boards, and then did all of these joists across left to right. And I actually didn't even need Emily's help on this one. So I got that put up there, got it screwed down. And this is what it looks like after the coop house is finished and the framing of the run. I think that the chickens are going to love this run. It is going to be so much more room than what they've been used to in their last coop. Next up, I went ahead and installed the door, which this part was a little more complicated, but I did end up getting it to work. It uses just regular door hinges. Now, before I put on the hardware cloth and the roof, I'm gonna go ahead and stain all of these parts of the run and the bottom post of the coop in this Minwax Early American stain, which I think is such a good contrast with that pink color and that white color of the trim. So I went ahead and just wiped all of this stain on with a t-shirt rag, and I did need a ladder to get to the high parts of the coop. After I let that dry, it was time to install the metal corrugated roofing, which again was the same exact process as the main coop house. I let those pieces overlap a little bit. I put as many screws in there as I could because I do want this to be able to withstand some wind here in Middle Tennessee. Again, I'm not a pro, don't know what I'm doing when it comes to roofing or really any of this, but I think it looks pretty good so far. And we are almost done with the entire chicken coop. The last step on the run is the hardware cloth, which is super important because it protects your chickens from predators. I'm not gonna share the process of this because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I will share the tips that I learned after doing it. So it tries to roll up on you, so definitely have someone else to help you hold it in place while you shoot it. And then the other thing is don't use the heavy duty stapler. I learned this the hard way. I came home one day and it was completely unraveled and the chickens were able to get out of the coop or a predator in the coop. So use those big screws and giant washers to attach it to your coop run. Now this next part is totally optional, but I wanted to make our coop look really extra and pretty and almost like it was a part of our home. So I'm gonna do some landscaping around the left side and the front of our coop and then do some hanging baskets off the side of the run, which I think will be so beautiful. So I ended up putting some of our landscaping fabric and cutting that in kind of an L shape around the left side and the front. And then I got my plants all placed into the spots that I wanted them and I started to dig the holes and plant these plants.
now all that is left is the little details like food, water, and the little ramp to get in and out of the chicken coop. I also went ahead and used this sweet PDZ stuff, which is basically like a kitty litter. It's supposed to eliminate all the odors for the chickens inside the coop and it works so well. But here it is, the final look of the chicken coop. I think it looks so good. Emily is happy with it. I think the chickens are going to love it. And I can't say enough about the third Coast Craftsman plans. This coop was so well thought out, especially the inside of it. It's gonna be such a easy coop to clean and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm honestly proud of myself. I've never built anything like this before. This was a really big project and I just showed myself that I can do anything with a little bit of help from plans or YouTube or different things and a lot of hard work. I was able to do this and I know that you guys can too, no matter how skilled that you may be. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting our channel. If you guys have enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm gonna to try to put all of the details down in the description below with links and all kinds of stuff like that, everything you might need to build one of these for yourselves. Again, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.